It's that beautiful time of year. The summer solstice has kicked off. You're getting sunburned and eating ice cream for breakfast to cool down is just totally valid. But it's also the time for the Steam Summer Sale. And this year, there are some real bangers across so many AAA and indie games as well as everything in between. In this video today, I'm going to go through my top 10 picks for the best games in the 2022 Steam Summer Sale. We'll be uh, talking about strategy, RPG, action, colony sim, all sorts of games in this list. This is of course my opinion, and while it is numbered 1 to 10, each item should be taken on its own merits. And you can quickly navigate to any game that interests you the most by using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. I've done a number of these videos in the past as well, so you can find that playlist linked in the upper right hand corner. I try my best not to cover the same games multiple years in a row, but sometimes you can't help but bring up the fact that Sekiro is now 50% off this year. That's a that's a quick honorable mention for you since it's not on this list, but you'll find a link to my Nexus store in the description and pinned comment which you can use to purchase some of the games on this list, which goes towards helping to keep the channel alive. Just a word of warning, the sale isn't always reflected on the Nexus store, and if that's the case, please just go through whatever means is best for your wallet. I'm more concerned about you saving money than me getting commissioned through any affiliate marketing links. But with that being said, let's dive in on my top 10 games for the Steam 2022 Summer Sale. The first item on this list is a game that just recently moved from the Epic Store exclusivity to Steam. Chivalry 2 by Torn Banner Studios is an amazingly fun romp through medieval combat, granting you plenty of hours of taking people's heads off, riding them down on horseback, or just cavorting around naked with a gigantic sword. If you've played For Honor, Mordhau, or even Chivalry 1, then this is a formula that you'll be very familiar with. Chivalry 2 is the ultimate weekend group co-op game where you get ye old troop of Discord bros together to drunken kill people in a massive team deathmatch, which kind of feels like a Walmart in Atlanta, or objective-based maps where you have to capture specific points to further your invasion of the specific map. What I love about Chivalry 2 is that it's a very low impact game and that you don't need to drop hours into it like say Mordhau to get all the cool unlocks and you can have a ton of fun in just one hour play sessions here and there. At 40% off it's a great $25 or so game that will get you and your friends stomping through some head taking good times. Moving into the strategy realm, we have Songs of Conquest by Lava Potion, a game that launched into early access a little more than a month ago, but has really landed hard into people's nostalgic heartstrings. Pulling influence from some of the more famous strategy games of the 90s and turn of millennium, Songs of Conquest is a pixel art throwback to the Heroes of Might and Magic days of strategy games, but with a ton of original twists that makes the game feel like its own. I absolutely love this game. From the music to the art and combat, it's just such a relaxing game that really helps you depart from the world for a bit into a bit of nostalgic strategy that makes me feel like a young lass once again. I, I said what I said, I'm going to stick with it. If you're familiar with Heroes of Might and Magic, this game will click pretty quick with you, but the combat, unit production, city building, everything present a challenge to master a lot of unique mechanics and elements that make Songs of Conquest stand on its own two legs without being distilled to a derivative of Heroes of Might and Magic. For a game in early access, it's also amazingly feature complete. The small development team at Lava Potion have poured their hearts and souls into this game, and I've covered quite a few guides which you can find on the channel as well. With 20% off starting on June 29th and lasting to July 7th, you can snag this nostalgic love letter to old strategy games that offers two full campaigns, single player versus AI, multiplayer, and a soon to come roadmap with more features on the horizon. CRPGs are something that can be hit or miss for a lot of people, but Expeditions Roam by Logic Artists is a refreshing take on a system that has been repeated across so many styles of games in the past. Expeditions takes you into antiquity to the year 74 BC, where you will command Roman legions, play a pivotal player in history, and even deal with important figures such as Cicero and Cleopatra. After creating your character's appearance, you will then choose between three rhetorical styles, which basically kind of, uh, they're basically a special perk, which is aimed at coloring the way you interact with people in the game. Ethos focuses on brute force to get your way, Logos is all about being clever, and then lastly, Pathos is geared towards being charismatic to stir the hearts of the people. 
Outside of that, combat is done in the same way that it was for Expeditions Vikings, a predecessor to the Roman version of the game, with a turn-based grid-style combat akin to, say, Fire Emblem. But the combat moves quickly and seamlessly from character to character, so it's a very solid and fluid feel to it that I personally really enjoy. You can also add permanent death to the game and a special Iron Man mode if you want increased difficulty. Also, the addition of army battles is huge, so once you reach the rank of Legatus in the game, you can then take control of an army and fight against others on the map. These armies are represented by small squares on a battle map, no actual units like, say, in an RTS, but it's a fun way to get that strategy itch on a massive scale by stacking, say, the specific bonuses and skills of your Centurions to win the day. Expeditions Rome is a very straightforward game, set in a period of history that I love, so it has a special place in my heart. The game is 25% off right now, and at $33, it's a really solid CRPG to get in to your repertoire. But what's nice about this is that there's a free demo which gives you some, I don't know, I think it's like four hours of gameplay to help you determine if you'll like the game at all. So I strongly encourage at least trying the demo to see if you can hack it as a legatus of the Roman legions. For those familiar with the game Northgard, the company Shiro Games just put out an early access for their new strategy game, Dune Spice Wars. Borrowing a lot of gameplay mechanics from Northgard, Dune Spice Wars has been a big standout game recently with the movie's debut just last October. Dune delivers in a big way, allowing you to play as House Atreides, House Harkonnen, the Smugglers, and the Fremen to vie for one of three victory conditions. Domination, which is just an all-out conventional destroy-everything military victory. Governorship, which is a political victory aimed at controlling large swaths of land and spheres of influence, or hegemony, which is aimed at a sort of victory point style of victory, where in your building, I guess you, I don't want to say taller, but rather going for more value than quantities of, uh, say, governorship. The game starts out simple enough with smaller bands of warriors roving around, expanding your sphere of influence by capturing local settlements, that kind of whole shebang. This then expands to you growing these settlements and setting up scouting parties to, discovering, uh, to discover harvestable minerals and resources across the map. Invariably, you'll then encounter the sphere of another faction that will lead to the beginning of diplomacy or war. If you've played Northgard, you know that the game's Early portions are filled with a lot of exploration, resource gathering, and setting up your territory. It's that sort of calm before the storm. But once things heat up in Dune, it gets absolutely wild fast. There's such a variety across each of the three fac I'm sorry, four factions when it comes to aggression that you get some truly beautiful combat scenes playing out before you when things boil to a head. And since the game is in early access, Shiro Games has shared the roadmap, which has multiplayer that was just added, a new faction later this summer, and plenty of other goodies planned later this year. In addition to that, the game is 20% off right now at $23.99, so it is a great way to jump into the Dune universe for some strategy game fun. Moving away from the strategy genre, we get into one of the big breakout games of this year in V Rising by Stunlock Studios. V Rising combines elements of a lot of different genres and titles out there to make this really seamless and beautiful action strategy builder game that has a ton of promise attached to it. Launching into early access about a month or so ago, V Rising starts you off as a vampire in a world where vampires once ruled supreme. A human uprising diminished the vampires over time, and you now fight to carve out an existence amongst the ruined vampire castles, bandit camps, and human settlements. With a top-down isometric view, you'll be playing an action-style game with a slight Diablo feel as far as loot is concerned, but with an intensive combat system similar to Hades and a progression system that is locked behind killing harder bosses across the map, which mirrors a lot of action-adventure games. You'll also have to dodge sunlight as you move throughout the world, which again adds an element of immersion and fun to daytime play. Not to mention the blood system linked to the different creatures that you can draw blood from with varying percentages of purity. The higher the purity, the more bonuses you get from the specific creature's blood. Then there's the castle building mechanic, which is kind of like a... I guess they're layered in in a Valheim-esque fashion where discovering different materials over time nets the ability to make bigger, better, and stronger castles, weapons, armors, etc. 
V Rising offers a pretty serene and enjoyable single player experience, but the game thrives as a multiplayer PvP game where you can join dedicated servers with their own set of rules. Getting killed is part of the fun and the fury of V Rising, but it ultimately makes for an intense and engaging gameplay that will lock you in for hours, solo, co-op, or in small groups called clans against other players. V Rising retails for 20 bucks, and with the sale, you're looking at only 10% off, but it's still such a low barrier of entry to such a huge amount of content that it's well worth jumping into this summer. Number five on our list, No Man's Sky, is a game that just keeps coming up on the radar for me every year. The game came out in 2016 or so, and it has gone from a total hype busting letdown to probably one of the best space sims out there. Moreover, it is a game that just keeps growing and becoming more expansive across all of its content. On the surface, you're a random space traveler that goes to interact with an ancient, super intelligent race. But as you go about the game, it quickly becomes so much more than that. No Man's Sky's many, many, many free expansions upon the game have delivered an amazing amount of breath to the space sim formula, with the ability to build bases on multiple planets, subnautica-esque underwater journeys, crossover events such as the Dune event with the sandworms, and massive mechs that you can now control, a new smuggler system. Shit, just last month, the new Leviathan expedition adds roguelike gameplay into the mix to further shuffle the amount of things you can do in this game. This year's sale puts the game at a massive 50% off, so for 30 bucks, you can jump into probably one of the best comeback stories of a game's history. Also, or in gaming history. Also, keep in mind, any future expansion, just like all the seven previous ones, are all free, like I said earlier. So, it is a game that you can come back and jump back into multiple times to have a fresh experience or expand upon your existing one for years to come. Suit up battle, brother, as we now seek to purify the heretic in the Emperor's name. Coming in at number 4 on our list, Warhammer 40,000 Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is one of my favorite games of 2022, and it delivers such a bone-crunching, pillar-smashing, nurgling-exploding good time across this XCOM-style strategy game. In Demon Hunters, you take control of a Grey Knight's battle barge as it is returning from a recent campaign. En route, your ship is intercepted and commandeered by an agent of the Inquisition. Inquisitor Vakir wraps you up in the main story of the game, which is to fight and investigate a rampant plague taking over a system known as the Bloom. Throughout the game, you'll recruit, upgrade, and deploy squads of Grey Knight Space Marines, super space marines geared towards fighting demons and holding the forces of chaos at bay from the Warhammer 40,000 universe. And this is all done in XCOM-style combat on the nicely varied maps that dot the many combat missions in between the pivotal story missions throughout your playthrough. Now, I'll be the first to say I fucking hate XCOM-style combat in any game that is not XCOM because it always feels clunky and it's just not enjoyable. But Chaos Gate nails it. For one, there is no percentage chance to hit in this game. Your character, whether shooting from ranged or making melee attacks, will always hit. But you can either mitigate damage or damage suffers a penalty from certain things like shooting at a much longer range or attacking unit's armor, whatever the case. This alone makes the game feel like there's less RNG involved and more tactics. In addition, the sound effects, the music, progression system, all of it is just so damn immersive. You take ownership of your squad and you really kind of grow close to each Grey Knight you recruit. With stellar voice acting from the likes of Andy Serkis and a strong story with great replayability, Chaos Gate is finally a good game in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. At 10% off, it's not super discounted, but the game retails for 45 bucks, and even at that price, you get a hell of a game, so it's absolutely worth picking up to help put an end to the ruinous powers of chaos. All right, we're into the heavy hitters now, and to start us off on our top three, we're talking about LEGO Star Wars Skywalker Saga by Traveler's Tales. Now, we all know the LEGO series of games, but if you don't, you really need to get up on them. Sure, it's juvenile fun with mindless puzzles and hordes of killing, but there's just something so simple yet so fun about this franchise, and this entry is no different. Skywalker Saga brings us through all three of the cinematic trilogies of the Star Wars universe, allowing you to play nearly every goddamn character with DLC for some of the Disney Plus shows that have aired in recent years. The formula for the game has changed a bit this time around though, with an expansion to the combat mechanics, combos, and even countering capabilities in combat, making Skywalker Saga something to be enjoyed by new and returning players alike. 
And that's something I really enjoy about this series. It has evolved just enough to be interesting from entry to entry and kept a lot of its original charm to be recognizable and enjoyable. The story is also told in the fun, goofy, and comedic way that has become on brand for the LEGO titles over the last decade or so as well. So while you might know the movies like the back of your hand, they are presented in a goofy way as to kind of make them engaging despite knowing the outcome already. With a new RPG style or new RPG style progression system for each character's many classes, there's also a ton of replayability. The LEGO series has always been one of replayability and collectibles, and Skywalker Saga is no different, so there's plenty to keep you occupied. With 25% off, you can enjoy the game at a discounted rate, but this also applies to all the DLC, which adds more characters to the mix, so you really want to play as, say, the Mandalorian, you can buy that character pack for less than the standard $3. So whether it's solo, with a loved one, a co-op with some friends, Skywalker Saga will scratch that Star Wars itch you might be having. Now we talked about a comeback story in No Man's Sky, but coming in at number two on our list, Cyberpunk 2077 has had a hell of a year and a half ride since its launch in late 2020. Cyberpunk has had a number of free content updates and major patches to roll out since its inception that have made the game play a lot better, a lot smoother, and a lot more immersive. The ability to customize and play with your apartment just came earlier this year alongside plenty of other content on the horizon. A transmog system, basically the ability to kind of copy the look of a certain item onto others for aesthetic purposes, was just teased this June, and we have the first big DLC coming out in 2023, which is rumored to take place on the moon. For those unaware or have not been following Cyberpunk, it's set in a dystopic future where the majority of the world is bombed out, minus certain megacities such as Night City, the location you'll be doing the majority of your romping through. Choosing from one of three life paths in the beginning, it will set the course for your rise through Night City slums to the heights of the Corpo Intrigue. With an in-depth RPG system, you can progress your character along any weapon you want. Stick to SMGs and hunt down your enemies, or maybe use bladed weapons to scythe through your enemy, whatever it is. There's also the ability to hack enemies, turrets, and other a number, a number of other things in the game. It kind of doubles as both a means of overcoming obstacles and almost like the game's form of magic. Uh, magic, I guess you could say. Night City is a huge, sprawling open world, and you can choose from multiple cars, trucks, motorcycles, you name it, to traverse CD Projekt Red's take on the Grand Theft Auto formula. If you waited in the past on Cyberpunk to be in a more stable state, then trust me, this is absolutely the state you were waiting for. The game feels far more alive and reacts far better to player interaction than it has in the past. The performance enhancements alone speaks volumes for how much better the game feels now. With a lovely 50% off, you can join in the great story as Keanu Reeves yells in your ear to commit corporate espionage and acts of anarchy in Cyberpunk 2077. Alright, the big daddy of the list is one of my favorite games on PS4 that just recently launched on the PC this last January. God of War. With God of War's sequel just around the corner, this is the perfect time to jump in on this series and get caught up with the first entry in this leg of the journey. For those unaware, God of War follows Kratos, a former Spartan general who becomes the Greek God of War, and it is a wild journey through Greek mythology, culminating in this current title, which pivots over to Norse mythology. God of War came out eight years after God of War 3, which this game follows chronologically, but you don't need to have really played any of the previous God of Wars to understand what's going on in this one. That's something that I really love. Santa Monica Studios set out to make a game that stands on its own without needing the previous ones to back it. You get enough of an overlap of information within this game to understand anything truly pivotal, and there's a ton of easter eggs for any of the fans of the series to gush over when discovered. God of War features a pretty robust RPG system, giving you a set of progression to Kratos with a near overwhelming amount of weapons and armor to choose from. Coupled with the crafting system and side quests, there's a lot to be done in this game, but you never feel like there's too much to be done. I found that God of War strikes a really good balance between too many or too little side quests, especially since a lot of the side portions of the game are unlocked progressively either as you get a new ability, a new tool, or just get to a new area within the game. God of War also has a lot of really good puzzles that help break up wading through hordes of enemies. I challenge you to not look up how to accomplish any of the puzzles because they're just challenging enough to think that you need to look them up, but can just be beat with a little extra brain power. It was one of my 
more favorite things about the game. But of course, you, ta- you cannot talk about a game called God of War without talking about the combat, which is just absolutely aces. It's satisfying, visceral, fast-paced, and has a lot of great layering to it. You progressively get more mechanics introduced to your combos, and you get access to better ways to kill things that make you feel like more of a badass later on, without adding super complex button mashing to get you to victory. Lastly, the story is incredible. Uh, You'll find yourself calling everyone brother by the end of your first playthrough because of a specific character always referring to you in that way. God of War was a great game at launch and continues to be an amazing one to this day. For 40 bucks at 20% off, it's definitely a game to fill up your summer queue with. And with that, it brings our video here to a close. We've covered a lot of ground across strategy games, CRPGs, action adventure, all of it. And on top of it, there are literally hundreds of other games out there for sale. So if you have if you have any strong recommendations for this list, please let it be known in the comment section below. I had to narrow down a pretty long list of games to get to the one that you see before you. But games like uh, War Tales, all the Doom Eternal DLCs, Frozenheim, Outward, Iron Fury, Medieval Dynasty, just to name a few, are all great games to pick up and worth investing if you wanted some other off-the-beaten-path games to look at. But thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, all that fun jazz. But have a good one, and take care.